What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Tonight I have your Survivor Series 2018 full show review and results. As you guys know, I'm going to take you through the entire show, every single match, let you know what happened, let you know my thoughts and everything about the pay-per-view. So let's go ahead and get started. So starting out with the pre-show guys, we had the traditional Survivor Series 10 on 10 tag team match between Raw and SmackDown. On Raw, we had the Revival, the B Team, the glorious tag team of Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. We had the Latino House Party, and we had the Ascension taking on the Club, the New Day, the Uso Sanity, and the Colognes. And this pretty this match was pretty much uh, you know just typical, um, pretty much just like a Monday Night Raw or SmackDown Live, just with a bunch of teams in there. And you know a lot of these guys they just put in this match just to have you know. Just, just to get everybody on the show here. But the last two remaining teams were the Revival taking on the Usos, and the Usos would super kick the Revival, and uh, Team SmackDown would win for the tag team. So the last men standing were the Usos, and they won it for Team SmackDown. So to start off the main show, guys, we had the traditional Survivor Series match between Raw and SmackDown on the women's side of things, the five-on-five -five matchup. We had Team Raw, you know, Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, Nia Jax, Tamina, we had Bailey and Sasha. They filled in for Natalia and Ruby Riot. Um, they got into some sort of altercation. I honestly missed that portion of it, but they did fill in. Thank God that Sasha Banks and Bailey ended up on this show because they totally deserved it. And um, basically, all you need to know for this matchup uh, is that it came down to Asuka uh, taking on Sasha and Nia Jax. This was the ending of the matchup. Uh, there was some good back and forth throughout this matchup, but it wasn't, you know, the, the greatest thing in the world. A bit sloppy at times, but uh, it came down to Asuka versus Sasha Banks and Nia Jax. Nia Jax would end up shoving Sasha Banks off the top rope and then uh, Asuka would lock in the Asuka lock on Sasha Banks, tapping her out, and then Nia, it would be her versus Asuka. And you know, Nia, everybody hates her right now. She's the biggest heel in the company just because she injured Becky Lynch and took her off the show. So they put her over here and she beats Asuka like a piece of trash. I called Asuka winning this thing. Should have been Asuka winning and overcoming all the odds, but you know how they do. They just want to ride the bandwagon that they got going right here with the heel Nia Jax. Jackson heel Nia Jax wins the matchup and is the sole survivor. Didn't really care for this. I can't stand Nia Jax. Even before she hurt Becky Lynch, I still couldn't stand her. So I don't know. That's the end of the matchup. Nia Jax it wins. Nia Jax wins it for Team Raw, and now it's tied one to one. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we had our first champion versus champion matchup. We had the Intercontinental Champion, my boy Seth freaking Rollins, the Architect, and then we had Knock America, the U.S. Champion Shinsuke Nakamura coming in, and this was an epic matchup. Everybody knew that it would probably be match of the night, and my God, did it deliver! And and thus far, it was easily the best match of the night. I thoroughly enjoyed this matchup. Obviously, you have two great workers. And um, at one point in this matchup, Seth Rollins, I thought he kicked Shinsuke Nakamura's head off with one of his super kicks. My God, he literally destroyed his family. I think that... Uh, Shinsuke's great-grandchildren are going to feel that super kick. I mean, my lord, he kicked the absolute head off of this man. But I thoroughly enjoyed this matchup. The ending was fantastic. I thought that, you know, Dean Ambrose was going to get involved. I thought for sure, you know, Dean Ambrose was going to come out and end this great matchup in a horrible way. Come out dirty deeds, referee interference or something. They didn't do that. They actually let the man go all the way through. I, just, again, a great matchup between great two great workers. Uh, Seth Rollins hits the curb stop after Shinsuke misses the Kinshasa. Really cool uh, ending sequence there. Thoroughly, 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 thoroughly enjoyed this matchup a ton. And uh, you know what? Team Raw apparently up 2-0. I, I have a problem with that, Brad, because uh, clearly we saw the Usos beat the Revival and win for Team SmackDown. We're, we're just not going to count the pre-show. We're not going to count pre-show matchup wins when SmackDown clearly beat Raw. I don't know, Brad. You can't put a 2-0 scoreboard up on the screen when everyone in the audience literally witnessed the Usos win. So I thought that was pretty stupid that they had that going on throughout the night. How they kept, uh, like, they didn't include the pre show matchup. I just don't agree with that. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about that. But this matchup was fantastic. Very happy that Seth won, even though I think it would have been great for Shinsuke to pick up this win over a thriving Seth Rollins. But it is what it is. Architect gets the dub. Next up, guys, we had the champion versus champion match on the tag team side of things. Raw side, we had the AOP. And SmackDown side, we had The Bar, the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions with The Big Show, obviously. And this matchup wasn't really much of anything, guys. I was really disappointed with this. I feel like they should have given them seven more minutes or so. Um, the ending of the matchup came when Drake Maverick ended up uh, helping either Akam or Rezar kick out. You know, he put his foot on the rope. Drake Maverick would then run away from Cesaro, run into the Big Show. Big Show would pick up Drake Maverick, start choking the life out of him. Did a great job selling that, by the way. And then he pisses himself. 
Um, and uh, it distracts the entire bar. Seamus, Cesaro, Big Show all just had to take a good long look at the penis of Drake Maverick. You know, p uh, pissing himself into his sweat. They look like sweatpants. I think they were jeans. I hope they were jeans, but they look like freaking sweatpants. That would distract them. Uh, they end up getting hit. They hit their finisher, and one, two, three, AOP wins the match. And now Raw is up three to zero, which is literally, literally three to one because the Usos clearly won their matchup. Four team SmackDown, but you know, it, whatever. They they think we're idiots. They think WWE literally thinks their universe is a freaking moron. So uh, AOP win here, and I guess they're doing away with Authors of Pain. I don't think I've heard anybody call them the Authors of Pain. I think they ditched that name. It's going to be like Elias and Apollo and all this stuff, guys. They're just going to cut out Authors of Pain. I heard Corey Graves. I heard the uh, the, the the ring announcer. I heard everybody call, refer to them as AOP, and I think they even uh, have them listed as AOP on WWE Shop and WWE.com. So they are now AOP. I don't think Authors of Pain will ever be said again on TV, but. They did win, and apparently Monday Night Raw is up 3-0. I wasn't very uh, happy with this matchup. I thought it would be a lot better, and that did not happen. Next up, guys, we had the Cruiserweight Championship match between Buddy Murphy, the champion, taking on Mustafa Ali, and boy, oh boy, was this match of the night, in my opinion. I think these guys tore the freaking house down. This and Shinsuke and Seth were very, very close, in my opinion, but uh, I don't know. I feel like this match edged them out just a little bit. The spots they did in this match were incredible. Mustafa was selling his absolute tail off. And Buddy Murphy just showing his strength. These guys are incredible. I love that, uh, you know, the crowd chanted 205 at one point. I wish that the crowd would have been a little bit more into this match. But still, just some sick AF spots in this thing. My God, they did a Spanish fly off the announce table. I was totally invested in this. Buddy Murphy did retain, as I expected. I did predict that in my predictions video. I would have loved to see my boy Mustafa find overcome the mountain, but I don't think he's there yet. I think that he's going to, you know, grind a little bit more, and he'll finally capture it maybe at a later date, maybe at the Royal Rumble or something. We'll see that, but what a great matchup, and Buddy Murphy does retain the Cruiserweight Championship. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have the men's side of the traditional 5-on-5 five -five Survivor Series matchup between Team Raw and Team SmackDown. On Team Raw, we had Bobby Lashley, my boy Finn Balor, my boy Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, Braun Strowman, Trash Corbin versus Shane McMahon, The Miz, my boy Jeff Hardy, Rey Mysterio, and Samoan Joseph. And this matchup, I don't know what it was. It just felt kind of crazy, guys. It felt like it was all over the place. We had some cool spots and interactions in this matchup, but for some reason, it just felt really, really rushed. I feel like, you know, they didn't have a lot of time in this thing. It was way shorter than last year. At least it felt that way. At the beginning of the match, Samoa Joe, you know, Team Raw was, you know, getting in a fight about who was going to start the match. Drew McIntyre gets in there. Samoa Joe locks in the Coquina Clutch, and uh, Drew McIntyre slips out, hits him with a freaking Claymore kick, and one, two, three, Samoa Joe is eliminated, and I was very upset about that. I was like, geez, man, come, what is, what is that trash? So that was upsetting, you know, to see Samoa and Joseph get eliminated so quickly. I mean, I don't know what he did. I don't know if he's hurt. I don't know what the deal is, but I thought that made him look really weak. I hate that they lost Joe that quickly. Um, I Another thing is that Finn Balor was the first eliminated from Monday Night Raw. I really hated that. You know, he was coming out in the fresh red and white attire. My boy Finn Balor getting laid down there. So he was first eliminated from Monday Night Raw. And I don't know, am, am I the only one that felt like this match just felt so freaking quick? I mean, they had like Shane McMahon running all over the place, doing spot after spot, taking a ton of damage. And, uh, you know, there were some cool interactions. I hate that Braun Strowman was the thrill of it all. You know, he gets put to the announce table. They write him off for most of the matchup. He wasn't even and in the match. Then as soon as he comes back, he eliminates Rey Mysterio, he eliminates Jeff Hardy, he eliminates The Miz, and he eliminates Shane McMahon and uh, Trash Corbin, Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre. Along the way, uh, Coast to Coast eliminated Dolph Ziggler, my boy, and uh, these four men were left standing for Team Raw. Obviously, Trash Corbin wasn't in the matchup, but uh, Braun Strowman leaves Monday Night Raw standing tall. You know, the whole theme of the pay-per-view was clean sweeping uh, SmackDown Live, even though, again, like I said on the pre show the Usos won the tag team match so it made no sense why not give Monday Night Raw the win in that match anyway that way it would be a clean sweep even if you're not counting it I don't know it's just really stupid to me but after the matchup Trash Corbin would attack Braun Strowman and then Drew McIntyre 
uh, Trash Corbin and Baron Corbin, no, Trash Corbin, Bobby Lashley, and Drew McIntyre all stood on the stage at the end of the thing, and I don't know, it was a decent little matchup, I guess. I mean, it was just basically a train wreck, guys running all over the place. Again, like I said, multiple times in this matchup, there was literally nobody on the apron. It was just one-on-one, -on -one, and it was, it was what it was. I don't know what to say, but Team Raw wins, and they ha have swept SmackDown Live for the most part, and we're moving on to our next match. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Raw Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey, taking on Charlotte Flair. You know, my be my girl, Becky Lynch, was supposed to be in here fighting it out, champion versus champion style. You know, the main woman on Raw going with the main woman on SmackDown. But uh, you guys know Nia Jax knocked her lights out. She got a concussion, a facial fracture, something like that. Becky Lynch had to be replaced with Charlotte. And my God, this matchup was freaking insane. I, I don't think I've enjoyed a women's matchup like this since probably Charlotte versus Asuka at WrestleMania 34. Guys, this matchup right here was quite impressive. I thought Ronda Rousey looked absolutely terrific. I thought that Charlotte did her thing as usual. Tons of great technical wrestling in this thing. It reminded me of like Benoit and Angle at the beginning. Like I was just totally shocked by how impressive this match was. I, I just genuinely enjoyed the crap out of this match. I don't know why I was totally invested the whole way through. I thought that both women performed outstandingly. And uh, the match, the end of the matchup came when Charlotte would take a kendo stick to Ronda. And then she proceeded to beat the hell out of her with two kendo sticks. She beat her with a chair. Natural selection to the skull with a chair. We had uh, a stomp on the throat with a chair, which I thought... Um, after that, they should have went to commercial. They should have bled out of the mouth, and they should have went to commercial and, like, sort of had an injury-type segment because her getting up after the match sort of ruined that. Like, I don't know why you would do the throat. Like, like that's, like, something that writes people off TV. So I don't know why they did that specific spot and then had Ronda get up under her own power. People were literally chanting, thank you, Charlotte. They were, like, booing Ronda. I was totally confused by the whole situation after the match. But I love the crap out of this match, guys. A fantastic women's match. Um, like, this is what the women's evolution is. This is what it represents. Not freaking six women tags with Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad versus Bailey, Sasha, and Natalya every single week on Monday Night Raw. This matchup right here is what you want to see from women, and it was great. I, again, what a great matchup, and I hands down enjoyed the shit out of this match. Just terrific stuff. Can't wait to see where they go from here. Would have loved to see Becky versus Ronda, obviously, but... These women delivered. Great job. Ronda Rousey has gotten so much better. You can just see she's way more comfortable in the ring. There was a bit sloppiness, you know, throughout, but my God. Great matchup. Hands down. Freaking just clapping it up for these women. Round of applause. This was terrific stuff. Ronda does win by disqualification after a kendo stick shot to her stomach. Then we had our main event of the night, guys. Champion versus champion. The Universal Champion Brock Lesnar taking on the WWE Champion Daniel Bryan from SmackDown. And this matchup went about like you thought it would, at least in the first, you know, eight or so minutes. You know, Brock Lesnar came out, just destroyed Daniel Bryan. My God, I thought Daniel Bryan broke his neck like six different times. Like, his concussions, I hope that he passes all of his concussion tests because it looked like he took so many hits to the skull, guys. It was absolutely insane, the damage that he was taking. Uh, Brock Lesnar Lesnar, you know, loads him up for a final F5, and then Daniel Bryan would, you know, start fighting back and fighting back and fighting back. They finally turned it into a match. Very solid matchup, not a bad match at all. I mean, it wasn't, you know, as, as good as AJ versus Brock, but it was still very believable. I think they did a great job at actually having, you know, some oomph behind Daniel Bryan. You know, like, we actually believed he could do this thing. He almost got it done. He had the yes lock locked in. I thought for a second that Brock was going to tap. But, of course, he gets out, he loads him up, F5, 1, 2, 3, Brock Lesnar wins, and Monday Night Raw completely sweeps SmackDown Live 6-0. to zero. Um, Again, it's not 6-0, to zero, it's 6-1, to one because the Usos clearly won the, the, you know, the Tag Team Survivor Series match. I don't know what they're thinking with this, but um, I guess this is supposed to balance it out now. You know, Raw won 6-0 here at Survivor Series, but Shane McMahon won the World Cup. So I don't know exactly what they're booking here, but hopefully it's an interesting storyline, and maybe we'll get some answers on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown Live. Um, I'm excited to see where they go with the Universal Championship moving forward. I know that Bra uh, Braun Strowman's supposed to have a matchup now since Raw won. Um, I'm sure we'll get Braun versus Brock at TLC, which is very lame. You know, no nobody wants to see that match again. I feel like we've seen it a hundred times. It's like Roman and Brock at this point. But uh, Survivor Series was a great show, in my opinion. I really enjoyed it. Um, one of the better pay-per-views, absolutely, the, that WWE has put on in a little bit, you know. Um, every matchup had its own little spots in it. I think the worst match was probably, what, the women's Survivor Series match? So, uh, 
yeah, I thought it was a pretty successful show from every match. I think there was some good sprinkled in every single one of them. I, I, I absolutely, I think that Seth and Shinsuke, the, the cruiserweights, the, the women, Becky, or Ronda, and Charlotte absolutely tore the house down. I was impressed with this match as well. Overall, great little Survivor, Survivor Series show. I thoroughly enjoyed it for the first time in a while. I didn't want to kill myself watching a WWE show, so that is definitely a plus. But Daniel Bryan does fail to the beast. And uh, we, we're continuing with Brock Lesnar. We'll see what happens with the Universal Championship moving forward, guys. But that does it for your Survivor Series 2018 review. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Comment down below what you thought of the show down below. What was your favorite match? Were you surprised by anything? Let me know down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.